Welcome to our new reality, at least for a little while. <clears throat> it's great to have you all tuning in. Great to have our skeleton crew, as <laughs> Troy called it, with us. <clears throat> and it's great to bring God's Word to you. Because even in the midst of all that's going on, God's Word is still true. God's Word is still effective. And you know what? God wasn't taken by surprise by this. And He had a plan in place. And this is the plan right now. And uh, I would like to personally thank Rob Schmutz for coming and uh, sharing God's Word with us the last couple weeks. Can I get a yeah, baby? Yeah, baby. You bet. <clears throat> Today we will be in the book of Ezekiel. And you think, Ezekiel, what kind of hope can he give? <laughs> well, I hope to tell you a little bit about that in the next few minutes. You know, with all of our <clears throat> hand washing and hand sanitizing regimen, we may notice that our hands get a little dry. May even start to see some flaky skin because we, we want to make sure that we're not passing any virus, be it the coronavirus or any other type of virus, to other people. And <clears throat> we don't want our hands to be dry either, so what we do is we find some lotion and we, uh, we rub it into our skin and the lotion helps our, our skin stay moist and supple and soft. But what do we do about spiritual dryness? The people of Israel went through a time of spiritual dryness. They were in exile in the nation of Babylon. They had lost their homeland. They had lost everything that was familiar to them. And through all of this, they had begun to lose their hope. <clears throat> and we look at our world today, at, at the reality that we are now living in. And sometimes it's easy for us to lose hope in what is going on. But during the time of Israel's exile, God was still speaking. And He spoke to prophets, including Ezekiel. And in chapter 37 of Ezekiel, <clears throat> the hand of the Lord took Ezekiel by the Spirit of the Lord and he set him down in the middle of a valley. Now these are, this wasn't the lush valley that you see in pictures. Um, <clears throat> trees and bushes and grass and shrubs. All green and, and, and all full of life. This was a valley that was full of dead and dry and rotting bones. There was no evidence of life whatsoever. But then God asked Ezekiel, Ezekiel, can these bones live? 
And Ezekiel might have been taken aback a little bit by this question because <clears throat> here was the creator of the universe asking him if these bones could live. And Ezekiel had probably the best response that any of us could have had. He said, O oh Lord God, you know. You know if these bones can live. And then God told him to prophesy over these bones. And what I will read to you today is verses 7 through 10 of Ezekiel chapter 37. Hear the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel says, So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And, I pro and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. So, in the midst of all of this death, in the midst of all this dryness, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. And he prophesied. He prophesied over these dead and rotten and drying bones. And then the bones came together and the sinew or the muscle came upon these bones. And then it was covered with layers of flesh. And then the outside skin came upon. And there was this vast multitude but yet, this multitude was still not alive because they had not received the breath of God. But then Ezekiel prophesied, and the breath came. The breath came from every corner of the earth. And out of this valley of rotten and dead and dry bones came a, came a living army, a vast multitude, as Scripture says. What was the only way that those bones could live? It was by the Word of God. Only God could bring those dead bones to life. And it's great to see the wording <clears throat> in here. Because many times throughout this passage, not only the one that I read, but throughout Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 14, Ezekiel uses the phrase, the Lord God. The Lord God. And Lord in this case is translated in the Hebrew Adonai or Sovereign God. He alone is God. No one else is God. He alone. And then of course, God, which is probably in, in your translation that you see in your Bible in all capital letters. And that is the greatest name of God, Yahweh, Yahweh. The name that could not be uttered because it was so holy. In fact, 
when scribes were writing down the Old Testament, writing down what we know of today as the Old Testament, when they came to the word Yahweh, the scribes would have to wash their entire bodies before they wrote the name Yahweh. That is how honored and revered and sacred that word is. And that word implies covenant lordship. So this was the God who made a covenant with Abraham. This is a God who even earlier than that made a covenant with Noah. This is the God who made a covenant in Jeremiah that said, the law will not be written on tablets of stone. The law will be written on the people's hearts. This is the God of covenant. And there is no one like Him, no one above Him. He alone is God. There is no name greater than that name. <clears throat> and you say, well, yeah, John, that's inspiring and that's great, but what does that offer us in this new reality in which we are living, at least for a season? What does this offer to us? Well, in our upheaval of schedules, how much we would enjoy being with all of you today as we worship together. In this time of physical distancing from others, in this time of shortages in stores, and in this time when we have received from our governor this stay-at-home order that goes into effect starting tomorrow. During this time when we are separated from each other, we may feel dryness in our lives. Perhaps even before this all happened, we were going through a time of, of spiritual dryness, of of walking through a, a desert, spiritually speaking, where we didn't hear God speaking to us. We didn't hear the voice of God. Maybe perhaps because we were too busy or, or too discouraged to listen to what God has to say for us, uh, to us and for us. But what do these words offer us? These words from Ezekiel. We see that after the portion that I read, God again talks to Ezekiel and, and He talks about how the bones are the whole house of Israel. And how the whole house of Israel was saying, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. But then God tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the people. And he was supposed to say, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open up your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. So what does this offer us in our new reality? Again, even if we go through it for just a season, what does this offer to us? First of all, we see we have a God who is all-powerful. God hasn't relinquished His place or His authority in heaven. He is still God. He has not changed. Our situation has changed. Our situation as people. 
Our situation as the church has changed temporarily. But God has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is all-powerful. And His power is resurrection power. Resurrection power that took dead and drying and rotten bones and made them a vast multitude, a great army, once again. And that resurrection power is at work within you and within me. The resurrection power that God has given us when we turned our lives over to Jesus Christ, when we said yes to Jesus. That transformative power is still at work in our lives. No matter if we are stuck in our homes, no matter if we can't go all the places that we could before, God is still at work. And His power is available to us. And we can still influence our neighbors and our friends and those around us with the Gospel. Maybe we can't get together with them anymore, but maybe we can drop off a meal. As long as we're not there very long. Maybe we can send a note or a text or an encouraging word to them. There are a lot of things that have shut down now, but God has not shut down. God is still at work. And through His resurrection power, the power that Ezekiel saw with his own eyes, with these bones. The power that is demonstrated throughout the New Testament when Jesus raised Lazarus. When Jesus raised others. And when Jesus Himself was raised from the dead. That power is still at work and is still effective in people's lives. So we have a God who is all-powerful. He, he, hasn't, he hasn't changed what He wants to do. The modes and the methods that we have had, that we are familiar with, might change during this time, but His methods haven't changed. We still can reach out and Praise God, we're finding incredible ways that this church and other churches are reaching out to their people and their communities. And we thank God for that. So we have a God who is all-powerful. Yes, He's more powerful than the coronavirus. He's more powerful than any obstacle that can come our way. Secondly, We have a God who keeps His promises. He kept His covenant with Israel. He wasn't going to let them languish in Babylon for the rest of their existence. He was going to act. And He was going to bring them back to their land. And even though King Cyrus of Persia never declared a a personal faith in God, God used Cyrus. And God used the people of Persia to defeat the people of Babylon and to allow the people of Israel to go back to their land. He kept His promises. He kept His covenants. The covenants that He made with Noah and with Abraham and with us. He keeps His promises. He keeps His promises. And with Israel, He was going to keep His promise of a Messiah. Of one who would come who would overthrow all 
of the obstacles and struggles and trials that the people had. He would overcome sin and the enemy of our souls and the grave. He kept His promises. He kept the Messianic covenant with the coming of Jesus Christ. And there were many who came to believe in Jesus as Savior and Lord. And there are still many that are coming to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And when this is all over, when this coronavirus threat and, and everything is over and, and we can come back together again, I can't wait to hear the stories of how God invaded people's lives. How the love of Jesus Christ worked in such awesome ways that we may not even believe what people have to say, but we will rejoice because God was still at work. He is a covenant-making God. He is a promise-keeping God. And He continues to keep His promises. And along with that, we have a God who does not forget us. He does not forget us. During this passage in Ezekiel, the people of Israel were living through probably their darkest hour. The only thing that can probably compare to that is when six million Jews were murdered during World War II. but they were living in their darkest hour. They had been forcefully taken from their homeland. They had lost everything that they had known. But God was faithful. And He did not forget them. He was with them in their darkest hour, even if they didn't realize that He was there. Because what has God told His people? either the people of Israel or His church, what has He told us? I will never leave you nor forsake you. And He hasn't. And He didn't. He didn't. (laughs) And all of this should bring hope to us. I know that there are times of anxiety. I know that there are times of, of fear or anger or discouragement, or uncertainty. Uncertainty about the present. Uncertainty about the future. But it's all in God's hands. God knows exactly what we need right now. Are you fearful? God wants to calm your fears. Are you anxious? God desires you to be calm. Are you discouraged? God wants you to be encouraged. Are you uncertain? God wants you to be certain. And the great thing is that God uses His people in all of these things. God uses His children to help His other children who may be going through these times. As Chazelle prayed, there are probably many children that don't understand what is going on. But you know what? We can offer them hope during this time of uncertainty and fear. Because I'm sure that some of them are just scared. But God wants to give them hope. God wants to give us hope. In the dryness of our lives. Oh, I can't get out of the house. Oh, I can't go to my favorite restaurant. 
Oh, I can't go to school and see my friends. God is there. And God will take our valleys of dead and rotten and dry bones. And He will resurrect them. He will resurrect them. Because He is the Lord God. He is sovereign. No one is above Him. And He is a covenant keeper. He keeps His promises. He keeps His covenant. And that brings us hope as God's people. That brings us joy as God's people. Back in the book of Isaiah, it reads in a portion of chapter 43, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers or streams in the desert. I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, so that they might declare my praise. That is what God does for us. He makes a way in the wilderness. A wilderness caused by a virus. A wilderness caused by perhaps our own discouragement, our own fear, our own at times disinterest. He makes a way and He makes streams in the desert. That is the God who we serve. That is the God who takes something that we think there's, there's no way that this situation can change. And God changes it. Because that's who He is. And that's what He does. He is a God who is all-powerful. He has resurrection power. He is a God who keeps His promises. And He is a God who does not forget us. He doesn't forget us. He hasn't forgotten us. It may be easy for us to think that He has during these days. God has spoken. And He will act. And He has already acted on our behalf. He has given us life. Not only physical life that we enjoy now. He has given us spiritual life. Through His only begotten Son. Our Holy Savior, Jesus Christ. His Spirit is at work within us. And because of that, we live. We are not valleys of dead and dry bones. We are alive because of God. Because of Jesus Christ. Because of the Holy Spirit. Latch on to the power that God has. 
latch on to the truth that God keeps his promises and latch on to the truth that God has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten us. I'll admit, these are uncertain times. We don't know how many people this virus will affect. We know how many people it's affected already and is still affecting. But we also know the one who is greater than the virus. The one who is greater than any obstacle that comes against us is still working for us and in us and through us. He is still God. Nothing will ever change that. And that brings us hope. And that brings us joy. In the midst of our sorrow, in the midst of our anxiety, in the midst of our discouragement, there is God. And that is enough. That is all we need. He is all we need. Will we trust in God, the all-powerful God, the covenant-keeping, the promise-keeping God, the God who does not forget us? Will we draw closer to Him than we have ever been before? Let's make a covenant with God that we will. That we will draw closer to Him than we've ever been before. And again, <laughs> after the season that this virus takes and we are back together, it will be awe-inspiring to hear how God made Himself evident to people, to our people at this church, to people of other churches. It will be awesome to hear how God worked and how God moved because He does in the midst of anything that happens, God still moves and God is still at work. And God wants to offer you hope and joy and peace today. Allow Him to give you hope and joy and peace today.